My name is uh, Michael North and I'm from Northwestern University. I am coming here also not only just to present some things that we do at Northwestern having to do with Pearl, but as also as an advocate. Um, over the past five or six years that I've been involved with Voyager, I've been involved with doing SQL reporting, and the Voyager community has been very active in supporting people that want to learn how to do uh, reporting using access queries or Oracle queries and it's, it's just a very vibrant community and uh, it's interesting to see Alan here since he's the one that got me started into doing that sort of thing and I've chased him for six years trying to be as good as him and I haven't made it but uh, it got me further along however in the past year uh, I've been very involved with doing Perl programming and developing Perl applications to improve enhancements at Northwestern. As I mentioned before, I'm sort of basing this on my experience with the uh, SQL reporting uh, community for Voyager. So <clears throat> what do we do with Perl at Northwestern that I think would be valuable to other people? Uh, we just finished a major three-year project where we implemented the PeopleSoft financial system at the university in order to consolidate all the billing and collecting and invoicing. Uh, one of the things that we did, we sat down with them and we agreed to a XML type schema and using Perl we extract acquisitions information directly out of Voyager on a weekly basis it's converted into an XML format and then sent to the PeopleSoft servers who then take that, pull it into their system and all the Voyager invoices are paid by them. And then we have reports that we can trade back and forth. There's error checking going on. Um, so this is, uh, we went live this last uh, December and has been working out very well. Some of the things that we do with circulation to add functionalities, we have mediated emails. And what we do is we use Perl scripts, and after we run circ notices, we extract all of the emails from those notices that the circ departments may want to have separated, and we dump them into the, onto the email server where they can then look at the emails before they're sent out. The way we apply this is, for instance, item available notices. It's one example. The library doesn't want the email to go out until they've had a chance to go out, pull the book off the shelf, put it on an item available notice shelf, then they manually send the email out so they can collect and review all the emails. That's not the only one they do. Um, each circulation desk has its, sort of its own unique needs and desires and so item of available notice is the one that's used by almost all of them. Uh, fine fee statements that we run we also do via Perl. One of the reasons we use Perl for this is because the circulation desk did not like the one that came out of reporter that's provided by in, in, inside Voyager. One of the main objections is that the library address is the address of the library that you check the book out of, not the owning library. And so if you had a question about your fine, they wanted you to call the library the book came from, not the library you checked it out of. So the only way to do that was to write a Perl script and massage it and then send it out. Uh, we have a patron loader program that we use to take the mainframe file, massage it into a SIF format, we also have, um, there aren't any emails in that system, so we have a separate system that has email addresses and we get a file from them. So the Perl script takes that email file, massages, massages it, merges it in with the mainframe file, formats that for a SIF file, and then we are able to load it into to Voyager. Sort of parallel with that from this mainframe file that has all the patron inf uh, information in it, is we also have turnstiles for entering the library and you have to put your ID card, it reads the barcode and then it lets you in. This Perl script then pulls that information, the barcode and the name and other asundrous information out and loads it, 
ma uh, into the entrance program, which is a separate database from the Voyager patron database. And then, of course, the bane of many of us, stats. And so we have all kinds of Perl scripts that run uh, on a daily basis, pull circ stats, transfers them to a web server, then it gets massaged by some PHP stuff and then it's displayed for everyone to be able to have more numbers than they'll ever be able to use. But they love looking at it. We also do some acquisitions related stuff with Perl. Uh, we have monthly selector reports that go to the people that buy the books and we have it set up so that it not only pulls the acquisition information, their allocations, what they've spent, what they've got left to spend, but then it also automatically emails it to them so it appears in their box. The ultimate in push communications, because if it were pull, they would probably never look at it. Fiscal period close. The uh, problems that we've had in the past is that when you run the pre and post fiscal period close reports, a lot of times they're just one big file. And if you've got five acquisition desks or departments, uh, these files can be very huge, particularly if you just convert them to a PDF. So our Perl scripts breaks down that file into the uh, files needed for each acquisition's desk, and then we send it to them individually. And of course, we also have a financial stats web page for stats for them. Then also we have some miscellaneous Perl scripts for server diagnostics. Um, well, we have one, of course, that runs every day that checks your dynamic files to see if you need to do a, regen, a keyword regen. We also have Perl scripts that, for some reason, we have a problem with our Oracle that it periodically takes the Voyager processes and they, they go into maintenance mode. And that's kind of confusing because you can do process checks, say, oh, Oracle's running, but yeah, it's running, but it's in maintenance mode, which freezes up Voyager and nothing works. So we have scripts that run periodically to find them and, and kill them and return them back to active state. Usually happens between 3 and 8 in the morning, of course, when everyone's asleep. So we have it running quite frequently during that time period. So those are just some of the things that we use it for. We have like 15 to 20 Perl scripts that run on a daily basis between uh, 5 and 8 in the morning for various ascendrious purposes. Uh, my goal is to, and, and I think EL Commons will be a perfect conduit for this, to develop a community of Perl developers and start sharing these things. I've already heard of a couple things today I'm going to be contacting people about uh, as soon as this is over. But to get a dynamic grouping together to share these Perl scripts so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. And then to, I promise to make this quick, so I just have two lighter note things I always add to my presentations. This is what we want to avoid. We want to avoid a, I just love this picture, so I find a way to get it in every presentation I do. So we don't want a barren Perl land script, a landscape, sorry. And Perl developers are real people too. <laughs>